Um, so the story of Larry came from Saul Farner. Who, when you thought about the character and the loser suit, was there somebody that you looked at and said, you know what, this guy is loser suit Larry? Or <laughs> how does that work? Well, yeah. the um, He's a traveling software salesman. That was the joke, right? Was that he, Larry was a traveling software salesman. And that part is actually based on reality. We had a guy at Sierra. I didn't know Larry Laffer was a traveling software salesman. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that's, that's always been part of the, okay. of the deal. Was, yeah. But, uh, but he was that because we had a guy at uh, Sierra who uh, loved to uh, come back from road trips when he was out selling games and um, regale all of us poor programmers and artists who were sitting there slave to these little computer screens back then uh, with the tales of his sexual conquests. And all of us are just going, God, go away, just, we don't, just stop it, we don't wanna. Anyway, and so when I thought, well, if I need a Lothario, well, how am I gonna, you know, who am I gonna base him on? And I thought, who better than this guy? And so that's why he became a traveling software salesman. Uh -huh. and, and in fact, Larry's last name, Larry became Larry because uh, when I said leisure suit, I got a laugh. And at the time, all the games were about people in the land of something or other. Right. And so lounge lizards is a funny phrase. So I said in the land of the lounge lizards because I thought that was a funny phrase to use. So uh, when it came time to give Larry a last name, I just gave him that guy's name. And uh, shortly before the game shipped, uh, I got a phone call from John Williams, uh, who was head of marketing at that time. And, he said, oh, you got to change the name of the game because, you know, this guy left the company now and you can't go out with that. So I went to uh, my Encyclopedia Britannica, which is... Uh, oh, my God. You're so Encyclopedia Britannica. Right here. Britannica. Isn't that... Wow. That's odd, That's isn't it? dating you. Yeah, oh, I know. Well, back then, that was oh, the I internet, had one man. I was a kid, That was the so internet. I know. I know. But the... Um, uh, so I, I thought, well, Leisure Suit Larry, Land Lounge Lizards, and in fact, I think the subdirectory we used for the game was, was LLLLL. Uh, we didn't even say LSL, you know, it was, right. we did five L's. But the, uh, so I thought, well, it's got to be alliterative. And so I pulled out the L volume, and I started at the front of the book, and I started paging through, and one of the first pictures of someone I saw was Arthur B. Laffer who was the inventor of the Laffer Curve, which during the Reagan administration, he was an advisor at Reagan, and he came up with the idea of trickle-down economics. Oh, Remember God. that guy? Yes. Yeah, so Arthur B. Laffer, when I saw that picture, I thought, what the hell? What a better name for a comedy character that is awesome. than Larry Laffer. And so that's, that's how he got you his know, name. I don't, think, I don't think that's ever been told until now. What point did you say, I don't want to do Lucius and Larry for? <laughs> <laughs> so you made two, and then of course, obviously, you made three because two did well, right? And well, we made three because two had done well, and at the time I finished Larry three, and I wrapped it all, the story all up, and put a bow on it. I mean, I just so I, I, I tried try my best to make it a satisfying ending for what I thought was going to be a trilogy of games. And that we would move on well, and, there was and a do something pack. else. There was a three pack. Yeah. Remember? Okay. So, uh, but that was kind of the limit back then. There weren't sequels number four and five, right. uh, which is common today, or 13 or whatever we're up to. Right. But, um, uh, but at the time, I thought, well, three is enough. You know, I'll do three games and, and I'll wrap it up. So that's why at the end of Larry 3, um, Larry ends up, you know, dropping out of the game and landing at Sierra and he sees, goes by the Space Quest set. You know, we faked it, uh, you know, uh, all these different scenes. It was, it was just an inside joke and it was fun for people who had finished the game and, and uh, uh, just a reward. And, and by, when the game ended, Larry was sitting on this deck typing into a computer saying, well, I think I'll start by uh, outside a bar named Lefties. And it was like the whole game had gone full circle, you know, and Larry was writing his story in this thing. But... Um, Regardless, uh, Larry five, I went to uh, do Larry Four, and I uh, was working on that, and I was really stuck. I mean, it was just horrible because I had ended up with, you know, he, he was in love with his girlfriend, and everything was, they were married, and they were happily ensconced on this, you know, beautiful setting, and everything was good, and it was like, oh my God, how am I going to go from here? There's nowhere to go. 
Uh, so I was really having trouble, and I, I sat and thought and took notes and did everything, but nothing came. One day I was up at the office, and I ran into a, a woman, Liz Jacobs, in, in the uh, hallway, and uh, she said, uh, what are you working on now, Al? Uh, Larry Four? And like a smart ass, I said, no, Larry Five. Yeah, of course, Larry Five. And I was like, oh my God, that's the answer. I don't, who says I have to do them in sequence? Why do I have to do four now? I could skip that completely, do Larry Five, and then refer to four throughout. And it was just like a big insight that happened because of a smart ass remark. And, um, Another and ripple became, effect. Another ripple. And it became a, a, a real godsend because uh, suddenly with, uh, you know, things were wide open. I could, he could be anywhere, do anything. And I had the honor of the, uh, the you know, this, this lever of being able to say, and you remember back during Larry Four how this was, you know. And so, and it didn't it dawn on me at the time. It, for me, it was a way out of a hole Pickle. that I had yeah. dug in for myself. <laughs> but it became a real marketing coup too because when the salespeople went out to sell Larry Five, the universal question was, from all the buyers was, what, wait, Larry Five? What happened to Larry Four? And, and we really immediately got mind share, which is half of making a sale. Uh, and so uh, the sales of Larry Five were just great because uh, uh, because of that, and and uh, and plus it became you know one of software's big jokes. It's it's a fun thing to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah we get that a lot actually in the comments. Yeah, what we want to see a Larry Four. What happened Four? to Larry Four? Where are the missing floppies? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there there were never there were never honest to goodness there were never any floppies and there were never there was never any story at all. It was always just a means to an end. That's really funny. Yeah. So now they know. Yeah, that's the truth. Uh, where where does the material come from when you when you're creating these games? Well, I mean, you gotta you know. Do you work? Are, is it a collaborative environment? Do you sit I've, at night? I have worked in collaborative environments. Um, I have worked without, and uh, um, I, I'm a good brainstormer. I think I, I tend to. Um, think better when like if it's two of us talking uh, I can do a lot more a lot more quickly than I could if I was just sitting thinking alone but mostly uh, uh, game design is a lonely job and so what I my technique was always to create long lists of things so I had a clipboard like you're actually I had that clipboard that you're holding there and I would just um, uh, make notes of things, lists of things that I wanted to include, embarrassing moments that I could put the poor guy through again, and and um, uh, naming conventions for women, and uh, situations, and uh, settings, and what kind of animations we'd need for this, and what sound effects, and I, I so I had these long lists of all these things, and eventually those would be shaped and moved around and formed into a design. Wow, it's amazing how and. If anybody, don't tell Sierra, but if anybody wants a copy, uh, you can go to my website, allo.com, and uh, and I posted all those game design documents up there. I saw them. Uh-huh. So yeah, I saw you them. Want to sit, well, if you want to see what notes. a game design, I don't know how other people do it because there were no classes back then. You right. know, there was no, and and because we were isolated out in the, in the Sierra, uh, uh, there were no, uh, 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 you never got together with other guys who were gamed. I mean, the, you know, I met with the, the other people at Sierra, but but no, for the most part, it was just uh, you kind of figured it out as you went along. It was just, you know, you do what you best you can. So I don't know what a real game design document looks like, but I know what ours looked like. And going through the franchise, going from one to seven, how, how did you come up with puzzles? How did you make the jokes? How did you... Because <laughs> this is all... We want to get inside your head, right? We want to... Ah. How, how does it go? About? I think there's a video of me from uh, uh, back in then that uh, it said, "How do you make a game? You sit down at your computer, and a year later you stand up." <laughs> you know, it, was, it was damned hard work. That's all I can say. Um, but we, how do you know it's going to make people laugh? Oh, well, that's the hardest part, man. Because when you would, uh, for me particularly, it, it, when you would design these things, you'd think, "Well, that's funny. I'll put that in." And then by the time you get the animation drawn and you get the setting done and you get the text done and you get the voiceovers recorded and you get the sound effects, and it's nothing's funny. 
it's 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 so old and so worn and you don't you know it's just like oh this thing's not funny at all oh my god you know and so i would when i would get the games close to done and we would go out in the um, press tours and show it to reviewers and magazine you know writers and things uh and they would laugh i was always surprised because it was like oh this isn't funny anymore you know they're someday they're going to figure out i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> I'm still waiting for them to figure that out about me, actually. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't until Larry Seven that I really felt like, oh, I know what to do now. I can do a game. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was over. Yeah, so. So, so then how does that make you feel now, you know, decades later, to be in control of the, the brainchild that, that we call Louis Larry? Well, at the time when we created these games we uh, intellectual property was uh, kind of laughable i mean we just assumed that people uh would just create more stuff i when we created larry i mean i remember doing it it was like well yeah i'll do this and then, then you know next next year i'll do something else i'll do i'll create something new and you know it wasn't like it became a thing so um all our contracts said, well, the intellectual property becomes the property of Sierra. Oh, well, that was fine as long as Ken and Roberto were there. But um, You didn't uh, envision all those well, craziness happening. Well, right. yeah. Well, I mean, after envision, Sierra yeah. went, after Ken went away, uh, within, I don't know, six or eight years, they, they ended up with uh, uh, something like eight different owners, you know, uh, serially, you yeah. know, from yeah. one to one to yeah. one to yeah. the next to the next. Um, yeah, so it really, um, then it made me rue the day that I gave away the intellectual property. But, but it's nice to have it back in, in your hands now and, and be back in our control. Well, you know, we're licensing it from yeah. Codemasters. Well, that's so true. We, we don't own yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We still so, don't have it back. So Codemasters has it. So now that we've come full circle and we're back at Leader Solari 1, um, how, A, how does it make you feel? Um, are, do you feel like you're happy to be back into it? Um, is this, you know, like, what are you wanting out of this, I guess is a good question. What I'd like is nothing more than to make people laugh and to see them know about these games that have existed for years that are still funny. And I'm just pleased as I can be and, and excited that uh, a new generation... I, I'm excited that we get to corrupt a new generation of gamers. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, is there? You know, I mean, do you see us making a new Larry? Do you want to? Do you want to remake Larry one, two, three, five, whatever, or do you want to go right from Larry one to a new Larry? How? how what's your, I guess, optimal, optimal situation? I'd like to see all of that. I would like to see the games brought up to date uh, and become uh, truly uh, uh, playable on today's machines in, in today's environment, uh, and also create a new game. I think there's plenty of things left to make fun of in this world, and and uh, and, and I would love to be there to help do it. That's, that sounds that sounds really cool, actually. Yeah. Um, and the fact that I get to be a part of it, yeah, is even cooler. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun. Um, so, does that mean that you're not retired anymore? Well, yeah, I, I've fallen out of retirement before. <laughs> okay. So, that means that we get to bring you to E3? Uh, sure. Okay. Well, I'd love to be at E3. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So, um, we're going to have to make those arrangements, obviously. Uh, okay. Right? Should we book them now? We've, Shall we just hang we, up here? We've, we've, yeah, maybe, Let's go. maybe when we're done filming. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I can't think of anything else um, to ask. I mean, I think oh, I have plenty more. Go ahead. Let, it's only been two or three hours. How long? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's fun, isn't it? It is fun. Yeah, it was fun seeing Jeff Keighley being on Spike TV. And, I, and you know, we should have some special reward for anybody who actually sits through to see the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll be surprised. I I hope so. I, know, you'll be surprised. I hope you're right. Yeah. No, um, we, I had a, I had a blast. This is this is great. This is Good. great material. So Good. Uh, let's do it again. Next let's go time. get some dinner. All right. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs>